All right, Jam, are you ready for it? I th- Let me check. Yeah. Ready. Okay, great. Yeah. It's part three, temperatures. Nice. This is going to be a little history, like what even is a degree? What's a Celsius? What's a Fahrenheit? Okay. How do we get here as a final bow on our last two episodes about thermometers and temperatures and how they came to be and how different thermometers work? Okay, nice. So we're wrapping it up and we're going to cover Celsius, Fahrenheit and the ever elusive Kelvin that no one talks mm, about. Man, poor Kelvin. <laughs> poor guy, dude. <laughs> I, knew I guy, think he's probably doing fine. I knew a guy named Kelvin. <laughs> um, it was his first name, but he never went by it. So it was like one of those things where like every year, the beginning of the school year, be like, and Kelvin, blah, blah, blah. And he'd be like, I go by my middle name. <laughs> so I've always thought about it like Kelvin, the name the guy didn't use, Kelvin, the method of measuring temperature that no one uses. No one uses it. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. hilarious. I wonder why he didn't like it. I don't know either. That's kind of, yeah. Maybe because it's like Kelvin is really close to Kevin. Yeah. And, but easy to get mixed up. Yeah. Sounds like just kind of like accidentally threw an L in there. Yeah. Mason's name gets mistaken for Madison a lot. Mm. And he just lets people do it. He'll yeah. be like, Madison, yep, that's me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like, I, I would, it'd be cool if someone saw it and thought I'll pronounce it the French way and be like, oh, Maison. <laughs> you have to say it like that to get Maison? To get voice to text to spell it right. You mm-hmm. have to say Maison. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, I'll be like, Siri. Text Maison, (laughs) and then I'll be like, now I got it. All right. right, Well, let's get into today's episode. I'm so excited. Let's do it. Hey, I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. And today's episode of Chemistry Free Life is dedicated to longtime friend of the podcast, Carol R. Yes, Carol. Ah. We've known her for a long time. She Very long time. She listened to the podcast early on, followed us on Instagram, interacted mm-hmm. with us a lot. Mm-hmm. And so super cool. And she's an English coach and she has her own podcast and her voice is so soothing. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember telling my mom about her and how excited I was that she was like using chemistry that we talked about to help teach that's science right. or teach English yeah. and science. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So Carol's like a real one from the beginning. 100%. So thank you for joining our chem community of patrons and helping keep the show going, keeping the access to it free, helping cover the cost of making it. We appreciate you so much, Carol. Thanks for supporting us from the beginning and now upping that support even more so by yeah. joining our community. I was so excited when I saw your picture. I was like, it's Carol. (laughs) So thank you so, so much. Okay, so let's get into it. So temperature part three, what are degrees? What are degrees and who is Kelvin? Who is Kelvin? (laughs) Not nobody, just kidding. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) he's a big old nobody. Okay, so in essence, (laughs) all the thermometers that we talked about Uh measure what's happening at a molecular level. They use what's happening at a molecular level to indicate, you know, a change in temperature, right? It's Mm -hmm. like, oh, here's roughly what the temperature is now. But they have to be standardized for that to mean anything. Okay. Right? So we have to have standards. And there's stories of Fahrenheit seeing thermometers, Fahrenheit the person, Mm. seeing thermometers, but they were just all, whenever he would see them, it was like everybody set their own, like what was what? There was no standardized version right and so we need a standardized version so that we can all talk about temperatures and it means the same thing right so this is where temperature scales arose from is that need you can see how easily it would um you would be like nope that's not the same thing that i've said that to you know (laughs) yeah yeah what if you're like well on my little vial of liquid it was uh about halfway. Yeah. It's like, well, on mine it was three quarters. It's yeah. like, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Golly. So um there's a lot of these stories are alleged, but I tried to find as many reputable sources as possible. This is the best thing I can piece together. So this is just more like a fun story history episode than like a you know, lots of peer reviewed journal articles. Okay. Okay. So let's start with Celsius. So Celsius is the the temperature scale that's used in everywhere in the world, I think, except the United States. Right. Pretty much everybody but us uses it. And it is used in science everywhere. So I tend to have a lot of my science terms in 
Celsius, actually. Mm. So like in the organic chemistry lab, all of our thermometers were Celsius. I think of water as freezing at zero degrees and boiling at 100 degrees. That's like um, where I think of Celsius first. Like it takes me a minute actually to remember at what temperature water boils in Fahrenheit. That's right. not like in my brain automatically. So that's definitely like the a standard one that is used a lot in science, but also just around the world. So Celsius is a scale that goes from zero to a hundred. You might have also heard it called centigrade. Mm-hmm. Have you heard do you remember that? Yes, I do. I feel like I remember that in some old like older textbooks that we had and also the occasional sort of like old um, person. (laughs) Yeah. Old person. Or I want to even say that like some of the like different practice problems that some and different sort of questions that teachers would borrow from even older books and stuff like that, that those also um, would say that a lot, but yeah, I never, I never really investigated further than that. (laughs) Okay, well, we'll talk about why it's sometimes called centigrade, but I'll start with telling you that Celsius the person um, was is Swedish astronomer. Okay. In 1942, he was developing a temperature scale, and he actually set the freezing point of water at 100. Okay. And boiling point at zero. Mm. And what is liked about this scale then and now is that there's 100 degrees in between, and they could be broken down into tens, which people like. Right. Okay. That's so interesting that he thought it made more sense to have it be zero be boiling. I know. I've I've thought about this a lot. Is it because we know now that it's the opposite, that it feels weird, or is it weird? Right. I feel like from the subjective human experience, it is more hot equal more degree. Like mm, that yeah. seems <laughs> yeah. like yeah. that just is intuitive. A hundred percent. But yeah, I guess you could be right. Who knows? Yeah. So, well, I think other people agreed with you because then Carl Linnaeus, Linnaeus, who's a biologist who also um, contributed to the nomenclature of, what is that? Taxonomy. Mm, he created taxonomy, nice. a taxonomy. I don't know if it's a standard one. Mm. I'm not a biologist. He flipped it because he felt it made more sense to have zero be closer to the death of points ah (laughs) which i really thought was funny (laughs) that's that's so funny what an interesting like like explanation i know know? instead of just saying like well it's it's like colder it's lower it's like no no plants die here yeah so (laughs) death equals zero yeah i thought that was interesting too so um but there are mixed accounts of this now both Lenius and Celsius went to work at a sa- a sim- the same university. And so there were some sources from that university where they claim it's a combination of Celsius scale and Lenius making it useful in everyday life is how we kind of came up with our final Celsius thermometer. Okay. Okay. And something that's fun here about centigrade. Um, I'm going to read this to you. This is from an old journal article that says, just how the ascending order of Linnaeus happened to be adopted in scientific circles under the name of Celsius, who seemed to have used the reverse order, is another of those interesting historical anom- anomalies that adds to the gaiety of the nations <laughs> and helps to make life interesting. Probably most of us would use the term centigrade, but it would be helpful to know just how far either Linnaeus or Celsius or both helped in giving us the rationally constructed heat measure. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Which I thought like basically it's just saying, who knows? It's kind of fun that yeah. it's a mystery like in a published paper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I don't think it's really clear who did which one, mm-hmm. but it is clear when centigrade became Celsius. So okay. initially centigrade is, centi is a hundred. So like centimeters right. is a hundred, mm-hmm. you know, if you, if you have centi in front of something, it means a hundred in the metric system. So that's why it was centigrade. Mm-hmm. Um, but that officially changed in 1948, I think to avoid the confusion of other things that were also called centigrade, um, that like other 100 degree things, 100, uh, units of something. Uh-huh. So they changed that to be Celsius. And my guess is that they use Celsius because they both started with a C. Mm. So degree centigrade could very easily be converted to degree Celsius. But in 1948, it was officially changed by the um, 
Conference of Weights and Measures, which um, the Conference of Weights and Measures is like an international standard of what things weigh. Maybe So maybe that would seem like there's no way I would have that in a textbook in growing up. So I wonder if it maybe just... I just, but I also wonder how long it takes for things to trickle down. Right. Well, I don't have a strong memory, but I wonder if it's like specifically an older teacher or two who would just say it like that out loud, but on the paper it says Celsius. Yes. Something like that. Like yeah. that would make sense. It was almost like, oh yeah, centigrade, like jogged my mind to remember when I was young, mm-hmm. that was something that came up. But like, so I was in school in the nineties. So if in the fifties, this got changed and it took like 10 years to disseminate, that's into the sixties. Yeah. And then like. I I could see how someone grew up in the 50s and 60s thinking. Still using that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they gave that to their kids who were also thinking that. And then those were our teachers. Right. And it was kind of like, mm, eh, centigrade Celsius. I could see that. Yeah, I, I could see that too. And I think this was before the internet was really around a lot, right? So mm-hmm. things didn't get disseminated just like that the way they do now, where it'd right. be like a worldwide news story that Celsius has turned to centigrade, you know? Or people who even actually do know it's changed, it's just the habit is so hard to kill. So it's like, people are like, don't you mean Celsius? I'm like, ah, whatever, same thing. Like, yeah. you know you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I could see there being a group of people who are just like, you know, what's the point? Like, there's not even, it's not that important. You know what right. I meant. It's not like we're actually confused. And so they just hold out. And keep on using centigrade. Yeah. So that's the story of how we came to have Celsius. Interesting. And I I really do see how scientists could like it. Because, yeah, for me as a chemist, like, I care really about water is something that we use a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we use it to evaporate other things. You know, like we like water to freeze and boil. It's like a lot of things are done in hot water baths or cold, cold ice baths, you know. And so, like, knowing what the temperature is at based on water boiling is convenient. Mm -hmm. So like for me having that and then knowing it's like nice and round zero a hundred and then these little steady increments in the middle, I can see how as a scientist, you really like that. Yep. Okay. But now let's talk about Fahrenheit because I can also see why people like Fahrenheit. Okay. Before you move on to that. Yes. Do you know someone who uses Celsius in a non, in their normal life? Um, like doctors, or you mean like in someone like everyday? Someone you know. Someone I know uses Celsius in their everyday life. Not every day, but uses it not in a science lab or whatever. No. Your husband and I only roast coffee. <gasps> That's because everything is standardized to Celsius. <laughs> well, we have the option to change our roaster to Fahrenheit, but because this roaster and people who post about it, mm-hmm. and it's like a the company that makes it is in Europe. Yeah. Um, a lot of the first people who ever used it and like created guides or recipes or whatever yeah. all use celsius and it's sort of the decision was like do we want to like have to convert in our heads all the time or do we want to just leave our roaster in celsius yeah so we've it's always been in celsius yeah. since the beginning and sometimes they even forget because i'm used to the numbers in it yeah and they're so unrelatable yeah. into other life because they're like into the hundreds right yes yeah. but i'm like i'm like i'm not thinking how does this relate to the temperature i cook stuff at or whatever right. it just feels like this is Numbers I'm used to for specifically coffee roasting. Yes. <laughs> so it's like, sometimes I'm like, oh, wait, this is Celsius. I forget. Yeah. We're not talking because it wouldn't even make sense. It'd be like preheating it to like 300 degrees Celsius is actually significant. But 300 degrees Fahrenheit is like low for like an oven. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So anyway. But it is all hot. You know, right. it's like, it's all 300 degrees Fahrenheit yeah. Celsius, you know, so it's, I can see how that you forget that that's even what you're doing. Exactly. Like we set it to 300, 300 what? Oh, what? Uh, yeah. It's also the highest you can preheat to. So it's like, it's, we set it to the hottest temp. Yeah. So that's all that matters. There have been times where we've been talking about water boiling on this show and I, I had to be like, cause water boils at a hundred and then I'd be like, I mean, wait, what? And yeah. I like really have had to, because you just, like, I just get into, like, I'm not thinking about water boiling ever. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like when I think about it, it's just like in this scale that I've set in my mind. But your wife does that also. Temperatures, like taking temperatures in the medical field are in Celsius, yep. which I found out because I got sick when we went on a post-graduation trip to Canada and we didn't have a thermometer. 
So we bought one in Canada and we cannot change it to Fahrenheit. We tried. It's supposed to be able to change to Fahrenheit. It won't. <laughs> and so we're like, all of our temperature taking is now in Celsius. And I'm like, well, now we're just in line with the medical field. <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny. So it's like 40 is bad. 40 yeah. is a fever. <laughs> so yeah, I, um, there's like little pockets of life where it's like, yeah, I guess we'll just leave that in Celsius. So that's just one more yeah. is your coffee roaster. Yeah. So, and for those of you who aren't in the United States, you probably think like, this is a hilarious, odd conversation. that we're having. Yeah. It's like, yeah, and you're like, well, why don't you just use it for everything and stop being weird? It's like, we would if we could. <laughs> yeah, we, we would. We really would. <laughs> we would, yeah. And I have friends that are in Canada or in other parts of the world that who will tell me what temperature it is. And I have to be like, okay, 40 is a That's 100. And then if 25 is roughly room temperature, but it's like kind of hot room temperature. But when you're doing chemistry problems, it's easier to use 25. So that's what mm -hmm. we do. You know, and I like, mm -hmm. I'm like, so if they give me a number between 25 and 40, that's between 77 and 100. Like, <laughs> I like have to like, I have my own little scale where I know where the like pieces yeah. are. And I'm like, okay, what temperature does that feel like? Yeah. Because I know what things happen at, but I don't know what it feels like at different temperatures in Celsius. Yeah. Dang. So. Okay, so now let's talk about Fahrenheit. Okay. Let's talk about how how Jim and I conceptualize temperature in the world. Okay, so Fahrenheit was a Poland German physicist, and in 1924, so the other one was 1942. So this was a little before, but I like starting with Celsius better because I think it has like a little bit more logic and chemist to it, and mm -hmm. it relates to more people. So, um, uh, Polish. German physicist, Polish slash German physicist Fahrenheit had seen thermometers, but like I said, they didn't have any standard standardization. So people just like set their own reference points and they usually used alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, and so he developed a precision thermometer and he set zero degrees at the coldest he could get water to. How do you think he got a water colder than zero degrees? Because zero degrees is below freezing. Yeah. Um, it's something we've talked about before. I mean, we've talked about getting super cold water and it doesn't like, if it doesn't have a nucleation side or something that kind of helps it like jump into its solidness and form the crystalline structure, or whatever, but it can be. That's one way. That cold. But if the thermometer was in it, I think that would act as a nucleation site. Okay. So. <clears throat> We talked about something that can raise the boiling point and lower the freezing point. I think I just saw the light bulb go on. <laughs> um, something that can raise the boiling point. Oh, it's a different uh, pressure. It's under a different pressure, atmospheric pressure. That's one. Different atmospheric pressure. Colligative stuff. Uh-huh. Something in, mixed in it. That, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What did he use? He used salt. Ah. <laughs> he might have used different types of salt, but it doesn't super matter what. Okay. What all he mixed in there. So he when he mixed the salt in, then he could get it that far down. That's pretty yes, far. That is pretty far. Wow. I know. So he set zero degrees as the coldest he could get water to be with water and salt. Uh -huh. And that's why we have a freezing at 32 degrees Fahrenheit mm. instead of at zero degrees is because zero degrees is as cold as he could get water with salt. That's interesting. I would not have expected that. And also, we've talked about it in both ways, but especially more, you know, my memory stronger with it about boiling point. So I didn't really think that much about it for freezing. But like, obviously that we talked about the salt in the roads and stuff like that too. Yeah. So. That makes total sense. But how weird. I know. And then he set the other temperature, 96 degrees at how temperature the temperature of his wife's body. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like zero degrees is the coldest he could get water. 96 degrees is a temperature of a human body. Mm. And here's why this was widely adopted. And I think it will make sense to you and I is that zero degrees is cold. And it's a lot of times the coldest that people feel. Mm hmm. And, you know, it's like one of the lower temperatures and 100 degrees is hot. And mm -hmm. it's a lot of times the hottest that people feel. Right. <laughs> one of the hotter outdoor temperatures. It feels intuitive to the human experience to yes. be like uh, 100 is super hot. Zero is super cold. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And like you actually would experience them, especially if you live somewhere like where we live, 
Those yeah. are real temperatures that you could experience in any given year. Yep. We don't get close to zero very often, but it's not impossible. Right. But we definitely get to and exceed 100 yes. <laughs> every year. <laughs> yes, 100%. Yeah. But I think that was less true. I think we had less hot days previously than we do now. One time right. I was looking at like the highest and coldest days in Texas, and there's definitely a trend, yes. which makes sense. Yes, totally. So, but yeah, that's why I think it's it's been widely adopted, but scientists don't love it because it's weird that freezing and boiling point are at 32 and 212, which is why I don't know yes. what they are a lot of times. Yes. Yeah, that's very odd, mm -hmm. which makes sense because those weren't even what he was trying to base it on. Right. It's like Celsius, that makes sense, yeah. but it might we might be lost trying to intuit the weather. But people do all over the world. Obviously, yes, totally. Now. But if you had no standard at all and you were just starting out, if you were someone who did things in a lab and you cared about boiling and freezing, mm -hmm. you'd want those to be convenient. Yeah. But if you don't do that and you're just like, no, no, I just like want to be able to like tell you how I feel yeah, based on the temperature, how it feels to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I want it to kind of make sense. It's like, dang, it's hot. It's like a hundred, dude. Yeah. Like feels right. It does feel right. It but does, does it only feel right because that's what we've grown up I in? Th probably so. Gotta be. It's hard to know. It's so, hard to know. So wait, what would a what would hundred degrees Fahrenheit be in Celsius? 40-ish. Yeah, to me, I mean, again, like you just said, growing up. But 40 doesn't sound like a high number. No, it doesn't. So it sounds like, <laughs> golly, it's 40 outside. It's like, it just feels not hot. But Sounds other people, I have heard my friends from, like, like my friend, shout out Miriam and yeah. her husband, Neil, they listen to the podcast. Uh -huh. And I've heard them talk about, um, talk about, oh yeah, it was like 38, yep. you know? And I'm like, 38 here is almost <laughs> freezing. <Yep. laughs> and, and every time I've traveled to another country, obviously every single one of the countries is using Celsius. And so the people you're talking to around are like, oh, yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a high of, you know, 38 today. So it's going to be pretty warm. I'm like, that's going to get down to like, you know, 18. So you better bundle up or something like that. And yeah. I'm just like, every time I'm like, I just don't, so, I'm still not sure how cold you're talking or yeah. how hot you're talking, yeah. you know, but. Yeah, yeah. So I think that is why it has ex gotten widespread acceptance, you know, and probably why it held its own. I, to me, makes sense that these two are the ones that have held their own as long as they have, mm. you know, mm -hmm. when you hear that, you're like, yeah, yeah, those two make sense to the human experience and to the scientific experience. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, then the last one. Oh, I was going to say there are exactly 180 degrees between freezing and boiling in Fahrenheit with pe which people also like that. Mm. that like 32 to 212 is 180 degrees apart because it's like on opposite sides of the circle. Ah, oh, I see. I'm like moving. Yeah. But. Okay. Yeah. So there's that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just a little note, a side note that I found that I was like, Oh, I never even thought about that. Yeah. Okay. And then last is Kelvin, which is the unused one, which is the, um, you know, the odd man out here. So, <laughs> what if you're like, so never, I don't think I've ever learned about Kelvin. I can't remember if I have, but what if you start explaining it and it really was just like stupid? Like, <laughs> it's like, no one uses it. So, like, freezing is actually like the letter Z, <laughs> no. and then boiling is actually the number 1025. And it just like made zero sense. And it's like, well, I could tell you why no one used it. <laughs> it's because it's like, it doesn't Absurd. make any sense at all. So, or freezing is yellow and <laughs> and boiling is. So here's the thing with Kelvin is people use it in science classes all the time, but maybe outside of physics. And so people say this is the this is a scientific temperature, but outside of physics, I don't think it really is. Oh, OK. So I never use Kelvin in the lab. I always use Celsius. So mm -hmm. I don't really know why, but I know why, because scientifically, Kelvin has absolute zero where there is zero degrees is at absolute zero, which means there's no energy at all in the molecule. Oh, okay. And so there's no energy, so no, they're not moving at all. It's the it's the place at which all atoms have no energy in them, and therefore they cannot move. So how how cold are we talking? Really cold. So I, don't, I guess I don't know, but the, nobody's ever achieved that. They've gotten close, but they've never achieved that. It just takes into account that that theoretically this yes. exists. Yeah. Theoretically there's a there is a coldness you could get. Yeah. Too. 
Okay. That's a good question. Here, I can look up real quick what it is in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Zero Kelvin to Celsius. Let's see what it says. Zero Kelvin to Celsius. Negative 273 degrees Celsius. Okay. Which also at negative 40 Celsius and Fahrenheit are the same. So I don't know if that's also the same in Fahrenheit. Whoa. Yeah, that's a fun fact for you. Oh, no. It's negative 500 <laughs> Fahrenheit. <laughs> oh so my really cold. Wow. But they, they've never achieved it. And yeah. So nobody ever really talks about yeah. Kelvin. I mean, like, I don't. The last time I used Kelvin was when I was doing gen chem type problems. Mm. Like, because you use that in all those equations. Because they have constant space on or whatever, but I, I mean, I, I didn't ever use it, and I don't yeah. know other people who did. But I could guess that physical chemists, theoretical chemists, and then like physicists, I could see those people doing it, mm -hmm. but not me. Yeah. Why well, say keep trying, guys? Keep trying to get it all the way down. <laughs> I think they see will. what happens. They've gotten like within point zero zero something. I think. Of oh, it. really? I think so. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But, but I. I'm like, how do you take all the energy out of a molecule? Yeah. But it really, everything would be totally frozen. So that's like the true freezing point is yeah. because nothing could move even the atoms at that point. Right, right. So. Yeah. Yeah, because we think of freezing as like, we're really talking about water. And like, that's not everything. Clearly. Yeah. Lots of things are doing fine in yeah. 32 degrees. So. Or zero degrees. Yeah, or zero. Depending on. Yeah. <laughs> where you are in the world or yeah in the lab or not <laughs> dang interesting so that's your little history lesson that's your that's our first this is our first episode back so our little intro into 2024 mm -hmm. and a little bit about how temperatures came to be did you say who kelvin was no i didn't write it down either mm. because it's like eh, meh. yeah Shmish, man. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even use that name anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't use that name. I'm what sure... if we really looked into him and it was like, Kelvin was his first name, but he never went by it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was a guy, a guy. I want to say an old guy, but I don't feel like a lot of them were probably old. They just were around yeah. in, in an old time. And they just, they just were, when they died, they were old. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> when we heard about them, it seemed like they were old because yeah. it was so long ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's a, that's a little bit about Kelvin. Yeah. Dang. Interesting. How weird. And also, it's also weird how closely we associate with the numbers because we grow up with them and we become familiar with them. Yeah. And they, they are there before we ever understand a lot of other math. You know, it's like, like you, you can be young and be told the temperatures outside, but not really understand almost anything else about numbers and already form associations with numbers. Yeah. Before you ever understand, like, oh, by the way, there's actually totally different ways of measuring this it's, that people in other countries use, and they use totally different numbers. It's like just one of those things that is fascinating to think about. <laughs> Sorry, while you're talking, I remembered a fun story, which is my sister who, you know, rules the world, basically. I mean, she, like, does lots of amazing things. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, it's hard to tell her no. When she was little, <laughs> she made up her mind that Celsius was cold and Fahrenheit was hot, <laughs> which kind of makes sense. Uh -huh. But she was like sure that that was true. And she did not believe my mom when my mom was like, that's not true. And my mom had to call her teacher and ask her teacher to tell her that yep. so that she would believe my mom. <laughs> that's so funny to be like, so like, yeah, when it's cold, you use this one. When it's hot, you use this one. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, what? Because C is cold, maybe. Yeah. It's like, and X F, degrees and cold. F is F is freaking hot. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I th I remember that while you're talking, he's like, "While well, we're young, we just get used to them being used this way." It's like not yeah. if you're Renee. She yeah. had her own ideas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, that was fun. This is a, this was a good lighthearted episode to come back from our break on. Yeah, hundred percent. Um. So, you know, real quick, do you want to wrap up with something fun that happened for you over the break? Yes, something fun that happened for me that was also a little bit crazy. Um, is that my family came and stayed with us. We did like our Christmas later than we, we kind of always do that basically. It just makes it easier on everyone's schedules. So they came, stayed with us for a week. So total, there were 11 people in my house and my house is not big. And we got creative about where to put people. And so every, basically every room had multiple people in it. <laughs> um, me, my wife and our kids were all in our room. My younger brother, his wife, their two kids were in our boys' room. And then 
my mom and my older brother were in this very room <laughs> where we record. Chaos. And um, and then my younger brother actually had to work while he was here. And so we set up a workstation for him in the garage because he needs oh, no. the nature of his work. He is listening to stuff, transcribing, doing things. He needs silence and quiet. And there was literally no other room to put him in that he could close a door yeah. and have some sound barrier because office, all bedrooms were taken. Yeah. We could not spare a bathroom. You know, we needed yeah. all of them. Yeah. And uh, so we set him up in the garage. Did that work out well for him? Worked out fine. He was a little <laughs> cold, but we put a space heater out there. Nice. And so literally, like, we could just barely make it all work. Yeah. It was like just enough spaces for everyone to have a place to sleep and for him to have a place to work. Yeah. Like this so, is going to work until the kids are a little bit bigger and then you got to come up with something. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's kind of fun though. Yeah. So it was cool. It was, it was a little crazy, but it was fun. How about you? How are your holidays? Um, You're not going to believe this. But I got sick again. <laughs> I also got sick, by the way. I forgot to say that. But I, I was, did hear about your sickness. Uh, and I, you just had to get one in, one more in, didn't one you? One more in. I had like just started to feel good. I was like, great. I feel good in time to go see my family. And then we got there. And then it was like, as the days went by, I started to feel more and more run down. And I was like, are you kidding? I was so mad. I got huh. sick three times. But I think the reason I got sick, and, and we'll talk about this probably more in today's community, is... I was working a lot because I was writing a grant, which has something to do with this podcast. That's right. So if you want to learn about that, you can go follow us on Patreon and hear about that in the bonus episode Mm -hmm. or the secret, the super secret episode, not the bonus episode. Right. Yeah. The super secret community episode. The community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I got sick again, but overall it was good. And um, getting that grant submitted is like a huge weight off my chest. And that's like an exciting new thing in my career that I've never done before. And, um, yeah. So I think that's like the biggest thing that happened over my break. I saw family and that was great, but yeah. it was kind of overshadowed by remembering that I had that to do, you know? Yeah. Hard to take a break when there's something hanging over your head like that. Yeah. It's like the mean teachers who schedule like a test right when you get back from Christmas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's kind of what the National Science Foundation does because they intentionally put grants due at the beginning of January uh, to like weed out people who maybe are not as committed, I think, is why they do. Yeah, you know, they really should do beginning of December or something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, get so it that done. we all get some break. But I get that maybe they're like, well, we got to get stuff figured out early in the year. So, okay, well, cool. Then do it earlier. <laughs> I I have heard that it's intentional to weed out people mm. who aren't committed. So it's not just that. Okay. Which is mean. Yeah. So. So that, yeah, that's the biggest thing that happened over my break that I'm very relieved. About. Well, you showed them. You showed them that you're committed. So I did show them that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's fun, and um, probably the biggest thing that's happened lately, I would say, and it's making me very happy. Nice, so. nice. Yeah. Well, thanks. Um, thanks for learning about this and breaking it up into three episodes was kind of fun. I yeah, liked it was it. very fun. I loved it, and I liked that we had a break before this one. I was very interested in this one. And I'd kind of forgotten a little bit this was exactly what we are going to cover in this one. I just knew we had another temperatures one. So anyway, it was fun. Thanks for teaching us. Yeah. And thanks to all of our listeners for asking questions. So this originally, this whole series started with a question from um, one of our listeners who is also a chemist and who works in chemistry. I'm not thinking of right now. Latila. Oh, I yes. could only think of yes. her Instagram name, which is different. And I was like, yeah. that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> Latila is the one who initially started this off. So nice. And um, thanks, Latila, for this question. And if you have a question, idea, thought, um, we love to hear those. They turn into full episodes like this, or they end up being a great question on our QR episodes. Mm-hmm. So we love those. Please send this to us on our website at chemforyourlife.com. That is chem, F O R, yourlife.com to share your thoughts and ideas with us. If you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the cost of making it, you can join our super cool chem community of patrons on patreon.com slash chem for your life. That's patreon.com slash chem for your life. You help the, the show keep going. You also get some cool perks. Um, you get a thank you note from us. You get to get updates behind the scenes kind of stuff. You get to be uh, a subscriber on our super cool community only podcast. Um, you, depending on which tier you pick, you get to come to coffee hours with us super cool um don't miss out on it go check it out but if you cannot do that you can still help us and help keep the podcast going by subscribing on your favorite podcast app rating writing review on apple Podcasts, and also by subscribing on our youtube channel 
and commenting or saying something on there too. Those things help us to share chemistry with even more people and help more people discover us. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. Jam Robinson is our producer, and this episode was made possible by our financial supporters on Patreon. It means so much that you want to be a part of our community and help make chemistry accessible to even more people. And those supporters are Avishai B, Bree M, Brian K, Chris and Claire S, Chelsea B, Derek L, Elizabeth P, Emerson W, Hunter R, Jacob T, Christina G, Katrina H, Latila S, Lynn S, Melissa P, Nicole C, Rachel R, Sarah M, Stephen B, Shadow, Suzanne P, Timothy P, Venus R, and our brand new patron, Carol R. Welcome to the community, Carol. We're so excited to have you. And if you'd like to learn more about the chemistry lesson for today, you can look at our references in our show notes or in the description of the video on YouTube. Yay, chemistry! Yay, chemistry!